The world is changing. I feel it in the water. I feel it in the earth. I smell it in the air. I'm David Gansel, and I know that's not a line from a theme park pre-show, but this is not only Armchair Imagineering, it's also the final week of Tolkien Adaptation Month! J.R.R. Tolkien crafted one of the richest fictional worlds in history with Middle-earth, and for decades now we've been able to visit that world through books, movies, radio, animation, theater, toys, and video games, but we still have not had the opportunity to physically step into that world. There has yet to be a Middle-earth theme park. They should have just left that there, all, all the stuff that was in Stone Street, and just opened a sort of, you know, Disneyland for Middle-earth. Now there have been Middle-earth tourist attractions, like the Hobbiton movie set in New Zealand, or the less authorized and sadly now defunct Hobbiton USA walking trail in Northern California. But despite many rumors about attempts from Disney to get a clip for the great movie ride montage, or attempts from Universal to replace Toon Lagoon with Tolkien la... Gulkin, Middle Earth remains unvisitable in a theme park environment. This may be in part due to Saul Zaints and his iron-like grip on the IP, but possibly also because it's deceptively hard to do an appropriate translation of the text to a theme park medium. Tolkien's more Luddite themes, his distrust of the machine, would feel inauthentic in a medium whose aesthetic is pretty much machinery. Well, decorated machinery at best, but still machinery. There was a time when Saruman would walk in my woods, but now he has a mind of metal and wheels. Step right up, boys and girls, to the Middle Earth Midway, where you can ride the Saruman Mind Wheel! Pretty much the only types of rides you can really do are horse-drawn vehicles and non-motored boats, which theme parks can definitely have, but very rarely are they the star attractions of a park. Then again, once Tolkien's life work became a marketing tool for the Burger King Kids Club, I think things like standards went out the window. So, if we accept that we're adapting Tolkien's world into this medium, what do we do with it? Well, Tolkien crafted an entire universe with ages upon ages of stories, so there's a lot of Middle-earth to draw from. But I have to accept the fact that if I didn't read The Silmarillion during lockdown, I'm just not ever going to read it, so let's stick with the main four books. Now, realistically, the most we can probably expect is for another park to license Tolkien's work for incorporation into their existing theme park, with only space for one actual ride. And if that's the case, I think the best use of that one ride space is a dark ride based on The Hobbit. The book, not any of the filmed adaptations. Yes, I know, book report rides are frowned upon, but if we're working within the limitations, think of how many scenes from The Hobbit would make great vignettes in a Fantasyland-style dark ride. You'd board the vehicle, you'd round the corner and see Bilbo opening the door as the dwarves tumble into Bag End. Then you turn into the kitchen to see the dwarves chipping the glasses and cracking the plates, like this shot from the cartoon in the style of this animatronic from Pirates. Then you turn to see a projection of the silhouettes of the dwarves and Bilbo riding off into the adventure, Seven Dwarves Mine Train style. Then you ride through the giant animatronic trolls that, thanks to projection mapping, turn to stone around you. Then you swing through Rivendell where you see Elrond reveal the moon letters on the map, kind of like an inverse of the Lampwick transformation on Pinocchio. Then you duck into a crack in the Misty Mountains where you're surrounded by orcs, but you escape down a dark tunnel where you see Bilbo pick up a ring. Then you go down the tunnel where Gollum chases a Pepper's Ghost Bilbo who disappears. Then you pass through a clearing with the company up the trees as orcs and wargs set them on fire, but you see the eagles start to swoop down above you. And then you turn and see the eagles hanging overhead, carrying the company to safety. Then you turn into Bayorn's lodgings where you see everyone gathered at the feast. Then you exit and enter the dark, narrow path of Mirkwood, move through some Snow White-esque scary trees for a while, filled with Forbidden Journey-esque spiders hanging above you until you end up in the Wood Elves dungeon, but you escape through the river path and ride alongside the barrels floating down the river to Lake Town. Then you see the thrush knock and the last light of the setting sun of Durin's day projects the keyhole on the door, then the door swings open into the Lonely Mountain's secret tunnel, through the treasure hall, around a shining Arkenstone on a pile of gold, and past a giant animatronic Smaug looking for you. 
Then you leave the mountain and see Smaug destroying the lake town via projection effects, but Bard shoots him down with the Black Arrow. Then you pass through the Battle of Five Armies, Orcs and Wargs attacking Dwarves and Elves and Men, and finally you find yourself back in Bag End with Bilbo writing his memoir, and you exit the ride into the Bag End Auction Gift Shop. I think that would be a cute ride that would be a great addition to any park, but it wouldn't fully scratch the itch of entering Middle-Earth. Middle-Earth deserves a full park. An obviously scaled down, but fully explorable translation of Tolkien's imagined world to a real-life space. The way I see it, we would enter this park the way we were brought into Tolkien's world in the text, which is to say, through the point of view of the Hobbits. Our starting point would have to be the Shire. Does this mean that the entire park would be scaled as if we were hobbits, with the realms of the big folk being double-sized and staffed with exceptionally tall employees? Or would the Shire be scaled to hobbit size, with us as human-sized, and hobbits would be played by smaller actors? I don't know. Realistically speaking, scale would probably be cheated. Every part of the park would be scaled to human size, and we just pretend that we change size when we enter a different realm. That's the usual theme park move. But hey, if kids can accept a Mickey Mouse who's over 5 feet tall, we can accept a Green Dragon Inn that's the same size as the Prancing Pony. Anyway, in my view of this, the Shire is outside the park proper. It's like the Downtown Disney or Knott's Marketplace or Middle Earth Shire Walk, if you will. There'd be the aforementioned Green Dragon and all sorts of charming little shops in the Hobbit Holes, and the entry to the park proper is at the Brandywine Bridge. Alternately, I guess the Gate of Bree would also make for a good park turnstile, but I feel like the old forest needs to be inside the park, not outside. I guess if the park is more based on the movies, there wouldn't have to be an old forest at all, but who wants that? Once you make it through to Buckland, you can explore the far corners of Middle-earth, compacted down to theme park size. From Rivendell to Dale, from Mirkwood to Mordor, from Lothlorien to Gondor, every kingdom is represented with a land of some sort, even if it's just a small stretch of familiar architecture. Now, what of attractions? It wouldn't be that hard to fill these lands with typical amusement park rides just sort of forced in to fit the theming. The Orthanc Drop Tower, the Barrels Out of Bond Rapid River Ride, the Exploding Mount Doom Log Flume, the Roller Coaster of Casa Doom. But while things like that would probably be necessary to make the park fun for a wide audience and ultimately profitable, like I said, it would feel inauthentic as a Tolkien adaptation to cram a bunch of cheap thrills into his carefully crafted world. I think a more authentic Tolkien park wouldn't focus on rides, but on immersion, using actors to make you feel like you are truly in Middle Earth, like Ghost Town Alive or what I hear Evermore Park is like. I haven't been there myself yet. So yes, what I'm saying I want is a fully explorable Middle Earth where every employee is role-playing as a resident of their assigned realm, and yes, I realize that's a huge burden to put on theme park employees. They will have to be paid very well, but don't worry, they only have to be familiar with the lore of their specific corner of Middle Earth. If some smarmy guest tries to quiz a resident of Lake Town on what the hobbits were up to in the Second Age, they can just say they don't know anything about that. But yeah, in order to make this happen, somebody is going to spend a lot of time teaching a lot of teenagers elvish. And while I don't see a lot of opportunity for rides in the authentic version of this park, other than horses and many varieties of boat, I do see plenty of opportunity for actor-driven attractions. Magic shows, stunt shows, even some Halloween-style mazes and scare zones. That's why the old forest needs to be inside the park, so you can walk through the haunt of the Barrow Downs. And for an upcharge experience, why not some guided tours? Sort of like the various Disney behind-the-scenes tours, except with an in-universe guide. Perhaps a Gandalf, or an Aragorn, or a Thorin Oakenshield leading you on your new adventure. You could choose to purchase different paths based on the different stories. Do you want to relive The Hobbit and make your way to the Lonely Mountain looking for treasure? That's an option. Do you want to join the Fellowship and march to Mount Doom or Gondor? Those are options. Do you want to do something that happens in the Silmarillion? Look, it's not that I don't want to read it, it's just that my attention span only goes so far, okay? Now, would this park that's light on rides but heavy on interactive character experiences satisfy me as a theme park fan? I honestly don't know. But if it was done right, I think it would satisfy me as a Tolkien fan. Certainly more so than the most likely option for an eventual Tolkien ride, which would probably be just 
renaming some Six Flags coaster to the Desolation of Smaug or some nonsense. But even if the attractions in this hypothetical Middle Earth park end up being kind of underwhelming, one thing is for absolute sure, the nightly fireworks will be incredible. But what about you? What do you think the best way to adapt Middle Earth to a theme park experience would be? Let's discuss this all in the comments, and... Wow, I can't believe we reached the end of Tolkien Adaptation Month already. There are so many other topics we didn't even begin to scratch the surface of. I think we may need to dive back into this world again next year. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me, everyone, and until next time, this is Dave, signing off.